Hey Divi Nation, welcome to a brand new Divi use case live stream. In this use case tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to add a payment calculator and a limited time deal to your car dealer website. And these are two things that can definitely help with the buying process and boost conversions. Uh, to add the payment calculator, I'll be using the calculated fields form plugin and customizing it using uh, the visual builder. And I'll also show you how to add a countdown timer to create a limited time offer or deal. And so without wasting any time, let's go ahead and jump in and get started. All right, so welcome everyone. Just wanna do a quick check, am I coming in loud and clear? Can everyone hear me okay? Looks like we're already getting acquainted. Welcome everyone. All right. Don't forget to feel free and post any comments. Thanks, Greg. Coming in perfectly. Um, post any comments or questions that you have and I'll try to get to them. And also we should have someone else from our team online to help with questions, hopefully. All right, looks like everybody can hear me okay. And the stream's coming in pretty well. Awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, as you can see here on my screen, I've already, this is kind of a preview of what's to come. Uh, you can see this is actually using the new car dealer layout pack, which was released last week. And right in the, Right under the header here, you can see I just created a featured deal and using some, uh, the countdown timer here, the countdown timer module. And I've also kind of, you know, used a pricing module here to get that nice looking um, price right here on this featured deal. And of course I've used some elements from the layout already. Uh, that were already pre-made to kind of speed up this process. So it's, uh, I hope to kind of give you some tips on how to do that well. And down here, you can see I've added a payment calculator. Technically it is a lease calculator form. Uh, and this is one of the um, short codes that were available with the plugin out of the box. So. Uh, they, this plugin uh, called the Calculated Fields Form plugin is uh, really a beast. I mean, it does a whole lot of different calculations. I don't have the math degree necessary to um, really create some advanced stuff, but you can. And also, uh, I'll, I'll get into more detail about the plugin in a little bit, but this is the lease calculator. Of course, you can update these fields up here. And then the uh, information or the calculated fields below will be updated automatically. So it's a nice way to like, you know, help that uh, visitor or user in the buyer process to see if they can afford these cars that they're buying. So that's the two things we're gonna be looking at. And of course, I'm gonna show you how to style the, the, this form uh, with the Divi Builder. So there's our preview, let's get into what are the things that you're going to be needing? Uh, first off, I just want to show this. This is our blog post that goes along with this use case tutorial, which was released this morning. So go ahead and check that on our blog page. There's a link to it in the description as well as a link to our Divi product page if you don't have the Divi theme yet. But you will need to check that out if you want more information. Um, also, you'll need the car dealer layout pack, which is also on the uh, free with the Divi Builder and you can access it when adding a new page in WordPress. So, and of course the calculated fields form plugin and this plugin is a, they have a free version in WordPress and it's a fairly popular uh, calculated fields form plugin and it does a whole lot. And uh, also it has a, you know, some premium versions of the plugin that will really make things a whole lot easier if you're looking to do more, you know, 
tweaking your, maybe have a loan calculator uh, specifically or any, any other kind of calculated form that you can dream of basically. But it does have some tools in the more premium versions or paid versions of the plugin that can make that process a whole lot simpler uh, because as we'll see, the uh, actually putting in the numbers in the field to make these calculations can be a little confusing. But thankfully, they do have a free version that comes with a pre-made form that we can use for our use case today. So feel free to go check that out. Um, after you have your form uh, plugin there installed and Divi installed, you should be ready to go. So let's go ahead and jump over to our create to create a new page. And I've got my new page up and running. Just go ahead and give it a title and go ahead and deploy the visual builder. That's going to be our first step here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click choose a pre-made layout. And we're going to go find that car dealer layout pack. <clears throat> Not to be confused with the car rental layout pack, which was also just released. So there it is, car dealer layout pack. Go ahead and select the financing page. There it is, car dealer financing page layout. Once selected, I'm just going to click use this layout. All right, now we're ready to go. The first thing I'm going to do is tackle this calculated form or the payment form here. To do that, I'm going to make some room here. So I want to put my form over here on the left side next to this contact form. To do that, all I need to do is just move this over because I want my form to go right there on the left column. And to do that, I'm going to go back now that you know where I'm going to put it. We need to go ahead and make and go get that short code for that calculated payment form. So to do that, I'm going to go to the back end of WordPress to the dashboard. And you'll see once the plugin is installed, you'll see the calculated fields form in the menu there. Go ahead and click on it. And this is what I was talking about here. It comes with some pre-made forms here, ready to go. There's a simple operations, a calculated, or sorry, calculation with dates. To give you an example of that. But down here, they have a lease calculator, and that's the one we're going to be using today. But to, you can also create new forms, obviously, from scratch. So let's go ahead and check out this lease calculator form by clicking on the settings. You can see how this thing is built. They have a form builder uh, on the back end here of the plugin. And as you can see, I can hover over all of the fields on the right side. And then once clicked, you can see the field settings pop up in the left builder here. This is where you can customize all the information you may need to customize your form. As you can see, each of these fields have a field name here. And this is important whenever you start doing calculations and you're going to want to use those field name variables, if you will, to plug into your calculations and, and then spit out those wonderful uh, results there in, this, in these calculated fields down here. So as you can see, this form is actually separated with a line uh, to kind of help distinguish what's the calculated fields below and what are the input fields above. And so to give you an idea of what the uh, a payment or sorry, a calculated field looks like, I'm going to click on this monthly payment. And here you'll see that it's kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can blow this up a little bit. And so over here on the left, you can see there's a spot to set your equation. And right here is where many of us are probably going to freak out a little bit because this looks really complicated. 
Uh, but it may not be as complicated as you think. And in fact, they do have some really helpful documentation on what all this means. Uh, just to give you an example of that, there's an equations format here, and I've linked to it in the blog post so you can check it out. This kind of just gives you the information on all the calc um, field, I'm sorry, equations, their formats, and how to use them to calculate new uh, calculations, if you will. But if you scroll down, you can see that they go through in detail the, the actual least calculator example and how it was built. So this is very helpful to understanding what's going on. So go ahead and check that out for more information. But for now, I'm going to be bypassing all that confusing thing, <laughs> calculation stuff and just uh, using the pre-made example here. And like I said before, if you don't want to, you know, burden yourself with understanding all that stuff, there is a some helpful kind of Kickstarter um, financing calculations that come with a paid version of the plugin. So you really don't have to know all that stuff if you want to upgrade and get that version. They do have some um, helpful already done calculations for you. So you wouldn't have to get your math degree to, to figure that out. So anyway, moving on, uh, this is an example of a calculation. So you enter it here. And the equation then produces the monthly payment in this example. All right. Uh, after the, the form is completely built, let's go ahead and check out the form settings here. Um, they, just to show you, they have the option of enabling an auto completion, which is already set. That just means it's just going to automatically update below without like clicking a button or anything. All right, so I'm just going to go back to my forms list here. And you can see once you have built your new calculation form, there's going to be a short code over here to the right that you can then copy and paste. So I'm going to grab that short code there. And let's go over to our new page. And in the left column, we're going to go ahead and add a text module. Now I've, I say this, uh, with every live stream that I use a text module that or I use a short code rather that it is always a good idea to use the text module for short codes because it does, the, the text module does offer some more, options for designing text, specifically um, headers like the H1s, H2s, H3s. And sometimes the short code displays or um, loads some content with H1s, H2s, and H3s, and, and even links or um, lists. And you can control that a whole lot easier with the text settings. Now, not all things will be controlled with the Divi Builder for these short codes, but some of them are, and you, sometimes you just have to explore which ones are available. And for a form like this, um, I already know that the text module is not going to address the actual fields of the form, but we can tackle some of those text designs and spacing elements to match our layout. <laughs> Uncle Social says that the forms plugin just melted my brain. I feel your pain. And yes. But um, thankfully, there are some helpful options out there to upgrade if you need to create some more calculations. So let's go ahead and go back to our content section here and post our or paste our short code. And once you paste it into the field there, it'll take a little while for the visual builder to recognize that content. Um, while it does that, I'm going to go over to the design tab and begin customizing some of these 
text elements. Um, actually, you know, uh, just before I continue there, there is an option I failed to mention under your settings of your lease calculator form here. If you go to the form settings, there is an option to generate a template. And you can see there's a bunch of templates there for your form. Um, I would advise against it if you want to control it with the Divi Builder because it's going to set some hard CSS classes in there that aren't going to be accessible uh, when you start updating with the Visual Builder. So use the default template if you want to do what I'm doing here and updating with the Visual Builder text module setting. All right, so let's see. What can we control here? One thing we can control is the, the text. Uh, from We're going to change it from a dark to a light. Let me go ahead and save it out. There you go. So this is what it looks like uh, out of, right out of the box here. Not too impressive. It needs some work, but uh, we can address that here. So now that we can see it, we can start updating some of these options. So I'm going to change my text color to light. You can see that now the, the form has updated with the light color. So that's nice. Um, also, one quick shortcut here is if we want to you know use some of these design elements already in our layout pack like font font weights all that stuff uh, an easy way to do that is to let's go ahead and save this text module and i'm going to go into this what i believe is a blurb module here and then i'm going to go to the All right, so the, let's see. Let's go ahead and copy the body text. So I'm going to scroll down to the body text here. And I'm just going to right click on it. And I'm going to copy the body text styles. Exit out of there. And I'm going to hover over my text module. And I'm just going to right click on it. And I'm going to paste body text styles. As you can see, that automatically updated my form with the proper or matching text styles there. However, looks like there is a header there that least says least calculator. So to do that, I'm going to need to go ahead and get my title text styles from my blurb here. Scroll down to the title text. There it is going to copy title text styles and then paste it and there you can see my title now is updated to match my layout so there you go uh, with a few simple clicks our form is you know close to matching so Now let's see, let's see if there's anything else we can do. I think that's about it. Uh, it's pretty simple to update the styles since it's mostly text, but we still do need to address these form fields. And to do that, there is a little bit of custom CSS to do that. And it's, don't worry, it's not much at all, but it is just to update these fields and there is a way for you to figure out how to target the the design of these calculated form fields and there is let me see if i can find it for you really quickly i know it's on our blog post here um let's see i apologize let's see i think let me go back well, if you look in the description, here it is. Excuse me, in the blog post, uh, there's a link to their, their FAQ page for the plugin. And I'm just going to show you what that looks like.
And this FAQ page does show you all of the CSS classes that target certain elements uh, for the plugin. It's not loading for me. There we go. And there it is. So right here, it gives you some examples. If you want to change all the input, text area, and select fields, you can just use this custom CSS class set up there, or ID set up. And that's what I've done. I've just copied that over, and then I put in my CSS to make the change. To do that, I'm going to go to my, let's go to the theme customizer and add in this custom CSS. And the custom CSS is in the blog post, so go ahead and check it out if you want to do that. All right, so I've commented it out just for this use case tutorial here, but I'm gonna undo it and publish. And what this is doing is taking out the border of the field, input field, and adding some more padding and increasing the font size to 16 pixels. That's all it's doing. Make sure you publish and let's go back, publish our page. And I'm gonna view it in a new tab just to show what it looks like. So there you go. Now you can see we have some larger font there for our fields. We've added a little bit of padding to make it larger, easier to read. And then we've taken out that ugly border that was there. So there you go. That's our least calculator form. So that's again a very simplified way to do it uh, but if you wanted a more custom form or calculation this plugin can handle it all so any questions right now before we go on to our limited time deal uh, feel free to post them. i'm gonna check them out right now um, video superhero says so impressed with the layout packs appreciate that i know our design team works really hard and um, I know I enjoy them as well. Uh, let's see. No questions so far for Ratapaluya. I don't, sorry, don't know how to <laughs> pronounce your name, but I'm, I'm very happy. No questions so far. Let's go ahead and check out Facebook here. All right. Um, let's see, is it possible to change day, hours, and so on? To a German version of it? Um, that's a good question. I do not know, Benjamin, if or how to go about that. Um, but uh, I appreciate the question. Um, let's see. Let's go. I do want to welcome our, um, our those who are just joining us. So if you are, welcome. This is this week's Divi Use Case live stream. And I'm going to be showing you how to add a payment calculator, which we've just done, and a limited time deal to your website. And these two things can definitely help the buying process and boost conversions. And to do this, you will need three main things, the Divi theme, the calculated fields form plugin, and the car dealer layout pack, which is free for you, from, and you can access it from within the Divi Builder. And for more info, check out the video description for a link to this use case blog post and the plugin I'm using here. And if you don't have a copy of Divi, please go ahead and check out the link to our product page. So let's go ahead and get back to it. So I'm going to add a limited time deal here and I'm gonna add it right underneath this header of our financing page layout here. but I'm going to use the listing page, or sh should I say listings page, to go ahead and get the design elements I need to head, give me a head start on this uh, limited time deal. So let's go ahead to the car listing layout pack, and let me just go ahead and jump to it here. 
So if you don't already have that installed on a page, you'll need to do that to get this. Um, is this the one I want? Nope, it is not. It is the listings page, not the listing page. But I love these listings. I love the way they're laid, they're laid out. And it, you know, it, it does uh, lend itself to a limited time deal kind of feel. So I decided to use one of these examples. Now, one way to do that, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and enable the visual builder, is to go ahead and use or save this element to our Divi library and then pull it back up on our other page. So I'm just going to copy this row and I'm just going to hover over the, the row element there and click this save row to library icon. I'm going to give it a name. Um, let's call it featured deal and save it to my library. Now I'm going to jump back to my financing page here. Let's go to the visual builder. And I'm going to hover over the add a new row icon there. And I'm going to right click, excuse me, not right click. I'm just going to click it. Then I'm going to click the add from library tab there. And as you can see, there's my featured deal. So I'm going to click that row. And that's going to add it right there to my page. but I kind of got ahead of myself. Uh, for this design, I actually want to create a new section for this row. So I made a mistake. So I'm going to actually create a new section first. So regular section, and then I'm going to close that out. Then I'm just going to drag the row into that section there. All right. I'm going to insert a background image. This is optional, but I just to kind of spice up the design a little bit. I'm going to click on my section there. I'm going to get a background here. That one looks good. And let's go ahead and give a gradient as well. And this one is just going to be a, a light, a lighter or semi-transparent black color. Let's just kind of give it a um, see, 0.8 transparency or opacity there. That's for the left gradient color. For the right one, I'm just going to make it white. And then I'm going to place my gradient above the background image. And there you go. Looks nice. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on. Save out my section settings there. Now we're going to move some stuff around. So uh, I'm going to delete this, this button history report. We've got a lot of call to actions here. I don't think we need that one for a featured deal, but maybe you do. So you might want to leave it. Also, I'm going to delete this price because we're going to build our own. And I'm going to move the information about the vehicle over to this right side. All right. And this creates a space that I'm going to use a pricing module to create a more custom price design. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to click here and I'm going to add a pricing module. Now, you may not have thought of using a pricing module simply for the design of a price, but I liked the idea and it kind of allowed me not to jump in into more custom HTML, CSS stuff to do the same thing. So I like to use what's already there if I can. All right, so I'm going to delete. Uh, the pricing table is automatically going to deploy two tables there. I only need one going to delete that one. All right, I'm not going to show any bullets, but I am going to use this um, content section. So I'm going to take out those bullets. 
I'm going to add a background color. Just going to make it white. And I'm going to go over to my table header, or excuse me, my design tab, and update my table header background color. So I'm going to go down here. Oops. You know what? I'm going to save myself some time. I'm going to go to my options and I'm going to group my settings into closed toggles. That's going to help me find some stuff quicker. So, all right, brief detour. Sorry about that. Let's go jump back into the pricing table. And so there's my title text. And here's my featured table header background color. Actually, I don't need that one because it, I'm not going to make this one featured. So uh, let's just do the table header background color. And I'm just going to make it transparent. As you can see, it's this default gray. And I'm just going to take it out altogether by making it completely transparent. Then I'm going to update my body font. Let's go down here to my body text. And we're going to select this Taiko font. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, and the body font weight will be regular. And the body text color will be this red color that matches the layout. Paste that in there. There we go. And let's change the body line height a bit to a 1.2 EM. Body line height is updated. Now let's go to our currency and frequency font. That would be the that little gray dollar sign up there. Um, but before I do that, I need to add some content here. I forgot about that. Um, actually, we'll do that in a second. Uh, let's go to our currency and frequency text for our pricing table and let's update our font to match the layout there and make our font weight semi bold and change our text color let's go to make it black but Cut, cut it down just a tad on transparency. Trying to match that, that color over here as best as I could. Um, currency and frequency text size, let's increase it to 30 pixels. There you go, you can see the dollar sign has been increased there. And then the price font, let's go down to our price text change our price font to match. I'm going to speed up this process a little bit. Sorry for the, uh, if you're getting a little bored, but uh, I do want to make it as pretty as possible. Uh, price text color, going to match it to our red. And there you go. You can see the 50 is updated in the red. And then uh, let's get it a cup, a custom margin of five pixels. on the bottom there. So let's, let's make five pixels. There you go. That's going to help with the spacing of uh, the price once we add um, the right uh, price there and also when we update our content. Okay. I think that, that about does it. I do want to get rid of our border on the outside. So let's go ahead and go to our border settings and just decrease our border width to zero. And that looks good. So let's jump over to our content now. Let's, that was all of our general pricing table settings, but now we're going to jump in and edit the design of the specific table um, settings. And this allows us to change the content. So uh, we don't need a title, so we can take that out. And we don't need the subtitle, so let's take that out as well. 
we want to keep the currency as the US dollar symbol. This per field, we, did, we want to put month because we want it to be per month for this offer. And then our price, just make it $199. There you can see, looks pretty good. Uh, the, the content section down here, I'm just going to delete all this and I'm going to add um, for, oh, looks like it's not big enough, for 36 months kind of some information about the deal. And then let's make it, uh, I don't know, $2,000. That's not a dollar symbol. Uh, $2,000 down. Something like that. Now let's jump into our design. And I do want to change the body text size there. So let's do that now. Uh, body text size, I'm going to increase it to 28 pixels. There you go. Change, it's a little far apart, so I'm going to change my line height considerably. I'm going to change it to 0.2 EM. That's a comma, sorry. 0.3, let's do 0.2. Okay, so there you go. That looks good. And that pretty much takes care of what we need to do for the pricing uh, customization. But let's go ahead and uh, I don't like that white background, so we can take that out. Um, let's just actually make it transparent. There you go. Now we can see through it. Let's go ahead and save that out. And now we're ready to add our pricing table. I'm sorry, our countdown timer. To do that, I'm just going to create a new row. And let's make it a one column row. And let's add our countdown timer. Now it's going to show you some, you know, default color in the background there, but we're going to change that. But before I do that, I want to move it to right above, I'm going to move the entire row right above this row with my featured deal here. There you go. And now let's go and customize the countdown timer settings. I'm gonna jump in there. Uh, you can put whatever time limit you want for your deal. But I do wanna update the timer title. Let's just put deal ending soon. All right. All right, so um, YouTube uh, says, sorry, Jason, I won't be buying from your site. The only American car I'd ever consider buying would be a Tesla. All right, duly noted. Looks like um, I won't be getting a customer. <laughs> All right, so let's countdown timer title, ending soon, deal ending soon, background color, let's make it the red. Got nice strong red color. And then we need to jump over to our design and let's change our title font to match the font of our layout. Let's increase it to 50 pixels. There you go, that looks good. And I don't like how it's, you know, that wide. So I'm just actually going to decrease the width of the actual module itself to 500 pixels. That's 500%. So 500 pixels. That looks like it's probably good. Looks Maybe it's, there we go. Um, let's see. Maybe that's too small. Let's do 600 pixels, maybe a little bit less or more, I should say. Let's do 700. So you, you can get it right uh, by, you just wanna make sure that the numbers don't get squished together. 
All right. And make sure you center your module uh, by clicking the module alignment as well. And the last thing is what we're going to do is give it some spacing. So let's do that. Oh, uh, I do need to add some custom margins. That's what it was. Sorry. So let's go to our uh, spacing here. And I want to make sure that this featured, I'm sorry, this timer actually overlaps my featured deal a little bit. And I'm going to make it overlap the above section. So to do that, I'm going to make a custom margin of negative 20 pixels. And then I'm going to make it on the bottom as well. And looks like I'm going to need to get rid of some of this section padding. All right, now let's go back. I'm sorry, let's go to our countdown timer settings, go back to our spacing, and let's increase that a little bit. And there you go. Now you can see it's starting to overlap a little bit. You can even add a box shadow if you want. Um, but that's pretty much it. So now the feature deal is ready to go. Go ahead and save it out. And get a preview of how that looks on mobile. All right. All right, so any questions before we end our live stream today? Uh, let's see. Uncle Social says the layout pack feels as though it's been made by someone else rather than the same person or team. Um, well, I guess that's good news. <laughs> we do definitely uh, want to, you know, create some designs that are work well with all kinds of different tastes. So it's good news. I'm going to jump over here. Um, make sure there's no more questions. Uh, thank you, Monique. Um, and we haven't seen our final result, but just to show you what that looks like, uh, let's go back up. Uh, to our make sure I save it. I don't think I saved it. And then let's look at what it looks like on the live page. Okay. All right, so there's our featured deal and our lease calculator. And if there are no more questions, I think I'm going to close it out, guys. All right, um, let's go ahead and get out of here. All right, that's all I got for you this week. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, please be sure to subscribe to our blog newsletter, our, our YouTube channel, and like us on Facebook. Keep an eye out uh, for our next freebie, our layout pack coming out on Friday. And our next live stream uh, will be this week in WordPress, and that's this Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern. And it, we'll be back here next Tuesday to, with, to do another Divi use case live stream. So if you want to share your knowledge and skills and expertise on the Elegant Themes blog, you have a chance to do that. You can check out the video description for more information on how you can contribute your own unique content. So thanks again, and I will see you guys soon.